I'm here with Dennis Gartman of the Gartman Letter. Dennis, thanks for joining us. Tim, always good to be here, be with you guys, especially here in New York. So everybody is in information overload, it seems, these days, and trying to figure out which data points are the best ones to follow to get a read on the market. Can yeah. you talk about some of the things you do to, to do that? I look at anecdotes a lot. First, let's, let, let's look at one that's become popular, and I like to think that Jim Grant and I made this popular, was years ago, no one, I mean, no one looked at Baltic Freight, okay? Uh, I started writing about Baltic Freight. Jim Grant started to write about Baltic Freight. Suddenly, here you are now, everybody's writing about Baltic Freight. Uh, it's probably lost its, its impetus as, a, as an indicator, but that was one that I looked at. Uh, I look at anecdotes. I want to see anecdotes tell you what's going to happen before they get aggregated and actually become hard data. Uh, I, I've told everybody, for example, cab drivers are one of the greatest indicators of how the economy is functioning of anywhere. And I get to travel a lot. I'm constantly in different cities, Toronto, Montreal, uh, Ottawa this week, New York. So I ask cab drivers, how are they doing? And the cab drivers will tell you if they're doing well or not. And cabs are down. The, the amount of usage of cabs is, is down. Cab drivers see salesmen moving before anybody else does. And that's always a sign of a turnaround. When cab drivers start to say business is better, I'll start to say business is better. Sounds strange. But it's, in, in the past, historically, that's been a very good indicator. I watch, I read different newspapers than, than a lot of other people do. We were just talking about the fact that I used to, wear, to read Women's Wear Daily. I got to go back to start reading Women's Wear Daily. But you could tell as colors changed in what women were wearing, how the psychology of the, of the market was evolving. So I look at those sorts of things. And, and uh, uh, I think more people need to do that because the market is psychology. The market's not math. This is not, and I think this is what's important for people to understand, this is not science. This is art. This is psychology, which is hard to quantify. And getting lots of different sources and seeing lots of different anecdote helps you. Do you think that the, some of the best traders have curious minds or are just always asking questions? Oh, well, by, by definition, absolutely. They're always going to be curious minds. Uh, the smartest ones think uh, like four-year-olds. They're looking at, at stuff, and I mean that in the nicest way. They want to look at things in, in, a, in a pure aspect and, 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 and allow information to come at them that somebody more sophisticated would find useless, but a great trader will say, you know, that's simple. I understand that. That's telling me something. Cab drivers tell you something. So I guess it's also a matter of, of trading what you know, sticking to that. If you're familiar with the cab driver industry to stick with that, or at least have some knowledge of that? Well, I, I think that there's a lot of things to look at. Uh, movements of cargo back and forth. I want to see the number of ships that are coming in. Uh, how many, how many, if I read something in the newspaper that the amount of cars going across one of the bridges in New York is down 30 percent, that's an important piece of information. It tells me a lot about movements of money into and out of New York. It tells me about demand for, for gasoline. You can, you can draw a lot of different things from, from different areas that accommodations may, at their outset, denigrate. But as a trader who's been around and has watched how economies move back and forth, it's, it's important. As a golf fan myself, I have to ask you about this because we talked about it off camera. Was yeah. the Augusta uh, tournament coming up and, and what your thoughts were there? First, it's holy ground, Augusta, isn't it? Uh, and, and the Masters is coming up. And it was interesting, in, in golf world this week, I, I read something that spoke to me economically, that for the first time in years, you can actually rent a house in Augusta during the week of, of the Masters. This is unheard of. And not only can you rent a house, but houses that were renting two and three years ago for $25,000, $35,000 a week are renting at five and $10,000. You can actually get tickets to the, to the Masters now. So it tells us something about how, how weak the economy is. It probably also tells us something about uh, corporate uh, outings and how quickly they have been taken off the front burner and made to be diminished. And there, there are a lot of things that that speaks to, but isn't it interesting that you can actually rent a house in Augusta? Never been able to do that before. Now you can. So if I have this information and, and I want to apply it to the markets, should I just think, be thinking about the specific industries that are applied to that event or to to, to what is specifically affected by what we're talking about? Well, I think what a, the, the Augusta thing doesn't speak to much other than the fact that that corporate America is under assault because we are diminishing corporate outings and it also speaks to the fact that the economy broadly is weak. Is there anything specific to Augusta that one should, should draw from that? Uh, would, you, would you sell uh, television short because, tax, because revenues will be down? I, I'm not sure you'd do that. I think it speaks to a broader circumstance about the economy generally and the psychology of the public generally. Thanks, Dennis, for your time. Thank you. You're watching the moneyshow.com video network.